This is the Stratomatic Baseball Excel 1973 Carryover League. Brought to you by the Shrimp Trawler YouTube channel. Welcome back, baseball fans, to the playoffs, wild card, nationally wild card, the five and four matchup in the nationally wild card, the Dodgers at a five and Vegas at a four. Let's look at the postseason schedule and see how this all happened. Why did we get to this spot? Well, Vegas is the winner of the Mountain Time Zone. So they, uh, and I've won it two years in a row. Prior to that, Colorado won it. And, uh, you get eight expansion teams in this 32-team league, so four of them will put in one division. That, gives them, that means that one is definitely going to the playoffs every year. They are the number four seed, unless they are better than the uh, division winners in the other three divisions, and usually they're not. Now, in the case of the Dodgers, the number five seed, things sort of fell in a strange way to their way. They started the year with the best record in the National League, and then before and after the All-Star break, they faded. They lost uh, four of seven. They lost four out of five to the Astros, four out of seven more to the Astros. Then the Astros continued beating the Marlins two straight, beating the Pirates, and the, it is the Astros who finished tied with the Dodgers, winning the tiebreaker, winning the division. And you're thinking, oh my gosh, the Dodgers are screwed now. They got, they lost the division on the final day. They're a wild card team. They're screwed. Well, Houston wins the division as the number three seed and gets home field, but they get the Atlanta Braves, the number six seed. Whereas your number five Dodgers are visiting, yeah, they're visiting Las Vegas. They have a road field disadvantage, if you want to call it that, but they have an easier opponent. So. Was this the Dodgers' plan all along? To fall out of the division lead in the West so they could play Las Vegas in the wild card round? Well, let's check it out. Game number one in Las Wages. Of course, it's Don Sutton, your National League Cy Young winner, against Ray Culp, the ace of Vegas and having a great year in his own. Low scoring game, as you can imagine. We have a Billy Gravarkowitz homer in the second. Then in the bottom of the fourth, you have a single, an out, a walk, a fielder's choice, and then trying to get out of the inning, a ground ball to the shortstop, Frank Baker. He kicks the ball. It's an error. It's an unearned run off of Don Sutton. Where have I heard that before? So Sutton gives up an unearned run. Then in the sixth inning, we have a single after stolen base scores Willie Davis, and another single by Ted Sizemore scores Tom Haller in the seventh. Culp last through nine innings, did a decent job. Ray Culp's nine inning line, taking a loss. Seven hits, three runs, only two earned, four walks, five strikeouts. But Don Sutton, folks, threw a two hitter. Uh, should have been a shutout, but his defense let him down. But it's Don Sutton, and he, he is just having, it's Don Sutton's world in 2022 with his 1972 card. It's on the top shelf of the greatest starting pitcher cards that Stratomatic ever produced. We'll show you the card now. Um, yeah, because he's not pitching today, but you should see the card. And again, I've, we got the we got the Steve Carlton card of 27 wins in the league. We got Tom Seaver's 176 ERA card in the league. But they're not as good as this Don Sutton card, folks. It is unreal. The few hits you can get off the dude. And it's playing that way. And the Dodgers... Take game one on the road in Las Vegas. No shocker there. Does Vegas put up a fight in game two? They put up a reasonable fight in game one. Game two. It's going to be Andy Messersmith. He was the number three starter at the beginning of the year. He's moved up a notch to the two starter because they like him more than Tommy John. And Andy Messersmith would go against all-star pitcher Woody Fryman. who's only lost once this year. Well... Now he hasn't. 
He's lost more than that. Uh, Vegas gets a run in the first inning on two singles and a double play. But we get an RBI triple by Buckner in the second. An RBI double by Russell in the fifth. Vegas ties it. They show pluck. Vegas shows some pluck here through five innings. But in the seventh inning, Willie Davis gets a triple. And of all the Dodgers who struggle when they Dodgers struggle and score runs, Willie Davis does not. His card has been consistent year after year. His 71 card. He's batted first, batted third, batted second, depending on what the Dodgers have needed. And he always seems to come through for the Dodgers. The story today, though, is Bill Russell, who homered. Two-run homer here. He had a triple and a double and missed the cycle by one. A, a Wes Parker homer. And it's 6-2, to two, and the writing's on the wall. Uh, they had Jim Brewer warming. I don't know why, just to give him uh, stretch out his arm a bit. He didn't come in the game. It wasn't needed. 6-2 to two victory. Pete Mickelson and Joe Moeller pitched the final couple innings just to get some work in. And you're seeing what the Dodgers have strategized. And that is to get a soft landing here in the wild card round. Instead of hosting a very tough Atlanta Brave team. And again, games one and two in LA, Dodgers may have won them. But they'd much prefer winning two in Las Vegas and coming home to LA for a game three and game four if necessary. Home field advantage now applies and they just need to win one of the next three games. So can they finish off the Vegas team? Pitching, your starting pitchers today for Vegas is gonna be Ken Brett, number two starter. Brett, card being used, was a 13 and nine, 344 ERA and 73 for the Phillies. If you're wondering how he ended up here, the Phillies have Carlton as a lefty, plus a couple lefties in the bullpen. You can only have three lefties on the team. So you couldn't fit Ken Brett on that team. And he got exposed in the expansion draft in Vegas and matched him up. And for the Dodgers, it is Tommy John, also in 1973, 16 and 7, 310 ERA, and 218 innings. Very similar pitchers. Should have a pretty competitive game. Vegas is a tough-minded club. They got good defense in spots. They have average in spots. It's just that they they really don't have an individual player to build this team around, as you can expect. They're the 31st or 32nd best team in the league, depending on how Portland plays. But this is what you get, you know. I mean, you get to the wild card round, and then you got to get really lucky, and they have not gotten really lucky. All right, let's get started from L.A. Leading off is Tommy Davis. 49, single one of 10 is a base hit for the B Steeler. Minus one arm catcher, so he'll stay put for the moment. Ken Berry, 63, pitcher X, John, and he's six at home. A two, he's six pitcher, and it's a GBA. I went two outs now, A-Rod. The original A-Rod rolls the pitcher, Aurelio Rodriguez. Oh boy. Bottom of one, Ted Sizemore leads off against lefties. 53, rolls to first. Here's Willie Davis. He doesn't mind batting first, second, third. He'll, wherever you want to put him, he's happy. And he's happy always hitting 300 for the Dodgers, year in and year out, it seems. 38, single one of 12 is a base hit for the ace stealer. Torborg's catching with a minus one arm. Dodgers are not going to give up being aggressive. They're going to steal bases. He's going to try it, and he's in there. Bill Russell batting third against lefties. He really hits lefties very well. 2-3, flies to right. And with two outs, it's Billy Grabarkowitz. 2-5 is a K. Top of two. Ron Hansen, 1-5, is a walk. Tim Cullen, 5-10 off of Tommy John, hit his column. Homer, 1-7, double. It'll be a double to center field, and Hansen will hold a third. Vegas has something going in the second. John Bacabella, 66, is a sack fly to left field. And Vegas has their first lead of the series. Jim Nettles, 59, again, off the John card. Hummer, 1-5, to five, fly ball the rest, and he misses it. And with two outs, Jarvis Tatum, 39, is a single to center field. Cullen, Tim Cullen, what are you, a 12 runner, 13, 14 runner. It's a minus one arm. He cannot run on the 13. He 14 or better for a road team, so he's stalled at third base. Runs in the corners. Two outs for Jeff Torborg. 2-8. Let's take a look at Jeff Torborg's card. Well, 
We know this about managers. We know Torberg would be a manager one day, and he was a backup catcher. Uh, he was the backup catcher in 1970 for these LA Dodgers, platooning with Tom Haller, who's currently on the Dodger bench for this game. But Torborg uh, ended up on Vegas with a minus one arm, plenty of doubles. Um, didn't give him power with that one homer and 134 at bats and the 231 batting average. But 2 8, double 1 9, and just like that, a two base hit. That will score one run, and you have second and third with two outs. And it's Tommy Davis. 6 12, rolls to the pitcher. And the DH, you get that funky DH injury rule for the pitcher. And John, his breaking points will now be hits, is how we'll play this early on and get him out of this game early. We're not going to yank a guy in a playoff game, though, because of that injury rule. Wes Parker, but we will, we will handicap him. We'll do that. Wes Parker, 1 6, double 118 is a base hit. Buckner, 210, single dot dot. Here come the Dodgers, right back. Runners on the corners. For Steve Garvey, 2-2. Two, two. We have center B, question, uh, center B plus injury, but he's a DH, and so he's not injured. So no effect, of course, to the pitcher when your DH rolls injury on his own card, and he doesn't get injured because he's a DH. So he does not get injured. And we have one out and a run in in a 2-1 game, and it's Joe Ferguson. 2-8 is a 6-4, 3 double play. We go to the third. Ken Berry, 39, is a walk. A-Rod, 39, flies a left. Ron Hansen, 5'11, short X. Hal and Near, acquired from the Giants in the offseason, is a 3E38 short, and he turns a double play. And batting ninth, the Dodgers, here is Hal and Near. 1 4 is a double to right field. Ted Sizemore, 49, second X. This is Mr. Cullen, a 2E32 at second base. And that's an error. Oh boy. Runners on the corners in a 2 1 game. They're going to bring the infield up for Willie Davis. 56 is a base hit to left field off the Brett card. Sizemore, does he want to go coast to coast with nobody out? 15 runner against a plus one arm. He's going to try it on a 16, and he makes it. So. You got Willie Davis being held at first. You have Sizemore at third. It is two to two. There's nobody out. I'm going to bring the infield up for Bill Russell. 68 is a sack flat to right. And Dodgers take the lead. Runner at first, one out. We'll let uh, Gerbarkowitz bat as he walks a lot here. 58 is a K. And with two outs, I think Willie Davis is getting antsy at first. He was to try a steal. A 15 is going to be out by a whisker. Jeff Torborg making himself known today with an RBI double and a caught stealing. How about that, folks? 3-2 Dodgers. They waste an opportunity to get more. We go to the fourth. Tim Cullen, 42, flies left. John Bacabella rolls to the pitcher. Tommy John's at E6. That's going to be a base hit. And the tie runs aboard for Jim Nettles. 65 second C, tie running scoring position for Jarvis Tatum, who got a single with two outs last time up. 46 off John, bounces it to second. Sizemore's a two at second base, and he 15, and he makes the play. It's these three two Dodgers, bottom of the fourth. Wes Parker, 2 4, grounds the short. Bill Buckner, 56, is a base hit to left field. Beast Stealer. Uh, they, don't want, they want Garvey to swing. Garvey's got a ton of homers this year with his rookie card. 1-7, though. That's going to be a base hit because you have to hold Buckner, the Beast Stealer. Tough break there. Runners on the corner with one out. Going to bring it up for Joe Ferguson. 1-8. You got another base hit because you brought the infield up. So pluses were rolled back-to-back -back times. They should have been out of this inning. But a little over strategizing here is cost Vegas. It is now four to two. Runners in the corners. Helen ears up. May as well keep it up. Two seven and didn't hit a plus on that one. The plus would have been a one seven, not two seven. But I have not. I don't recall ever hitting it three times in a row, which would have been a little silly here for a team that already has so many advantages. If you're on the 
Boo the Dodgers bandwagon. I, yeah, I could see your point here. Uh, Ted Sizemore, one, two. Foul out the catcher. Plus injury. We lost somebody. So, Ted Sizemore gets hurt. After all these plus injuries have been rolled. Can Hal Lanier move over to second base? I know Grubarkowitz can. Oh, you know, oh wow, look at this. Lanier will go to third where he goes from a three to a two. Grubarkowitz will go from third to second where he's a two. I need a shortstop and I'll bring in the only infielder off the bench, which is Frank Baker to play short. And that's how we do that. So, Dodgers have gotten a lot of base runners only have a 4-2 lead as we go to the fifth. And here's Jeff Torborg. 2-9. Torborg is serious today. Another double. Two doubles and a caught stealing for Jeff Torborg. Never say die Vegas. There you go. This team does not wilt. They play tough baseball. Tommy Davis. 1-6. Let's take a look at the Tommy Davis card off his former team. Oh, boy. Tommy Davis against his Dodger team. 1-6. Triple, 1-4. Single, dot, dot. 219 at bats for the Oakland Town. Oak Town A's in 71. Hit 324. Move on to Baltimore. He's in his moving era where he moves all over baseball. But 1 6, triple 1 to 4, single dot dot. We got a 4 3 game, folks. And Tommy Davis, lo and behold, is the rare B Stealer 1 to 9 runner. You're better off stealing and then trying to go coast to coast on a single. So with nobody out, He's going to try a steal. And he rolls 17 and gets thrown out. Well, you appreciate the aggressive style there for a team down 0-2 in the series. Tommy Davis gets thrown out. We have one out, one run in. Ken Bear's your batter. 2-3 pops to first. And with two outs, it's original A-Rod. 65, skies to center field. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth, but first, let's pause a moment for station identification this is the shrimp trawler video channel este es el canal de videos de camaroneros okay bottom of the fifth dodgers being tested uh, each team has scored individual runs in a couple innings in a row here so you go to the bottom of the fifth it's gonna be willie davis for 12 off brett flies left Bill Russell, 68, flies to right. And Billy Barkowitz, 46, is a base hit. He is a beast stealer. And he's going to take on Torborg. And he finally gets a stolen base. An impossible T rating for Torborg. It's 1 to 15, and that ball sails into center field. A little aggressive there with a the throw. Steals second, winds up at third base. With two outs now, Wes Parker could use a pass ball or. An error or a base, how about a base hit for a guy who was hitting 400 at the All Star rate? The pitch to Wes Parker. 4 12 off Brett. Skies to center field. Ken Brer has other ideas. He's with it off the hook, putting men on in every inning. And once again, the Dodgers do what they do they put guys on base and they don't score them. They once left, what was that one game? They scored one run and put 17 men on base. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and only scored four of them. Four, three into the sixth. Ron Hansen to lead off. 65, skies the center. Tim Cullen, 212, fouls to the catcher. And John Bacabella, 57, is a K. We go to the bottom of the sixth. It'll be Billy Buck, Bill Buckner. 2-8, let's take a look at the Bill Buckner card of 1972. 319, doesn't have much defense yet, nor much power. Um, only hit five home runs, but batting average is there. And uh, they'll have him, this card, a couple more years. They could bump it up to an improved card. However, we kind of have this situation where you have Wes Parker on the team, and then you got Garvey, who will eventually be their first baseman. It doesn't make much sense to have Buckner play over first base when Garvey's going to be playing there next year. So I think Buckner's just going to have to play out his 72 contract and then figure out a way of getting him over to the Chicago Cubs, perhaps. Anyway, 2 8 is a base hit. B Steeler. He's been on three times. 
Hasn't attempted a steal yet because of the Garvey uh, home run uh, theory. Uh, did manage to go first to third last inning on a plus off the Garvey card, but we're going to let Garvey swing again. 35 flies left field. Joe Ferguson. Now this guy should hit and run if he can. He's a C hit runner. He's a terrible hitter, so he'll hit and run. And he rolls the five hit and run single. Works to perfection for the Dodgers. You got runners on the corner with one out. They got to bring the infield up again, which has not been a wise defensive ploy thus far. For Hallinier. Two, four is a ground ball to short, and the runners hold. That time it worked. Second and third, and then instead of it being Ted Sizemore, who got injured last time, it's Frank Baker. Second and third, two outs in the bottom of the sixth. The pitch to Frank Baker. 38 is a fly to center field. Dodgers up to their old tricks, folks. They muck it around with even expansion teams. If you're rolling your eyes about this Dodger team, you deserve I mean, I agree with you. You should. I just don't see how this, this kind of uh, pop gun offense is going to hold up against those Cincinnati Reds and the New York Mets and... Oakland A's and those type of teams, Boston Red Sox, the heavy th thunderous teams who are still left in the playoff field. But they're beating up a weak little sister and lost wages. We go to the seventh. It's Jim Nettles. 63, bounces to first. This is Wes Parker, one at first base, makes the play. Jarvis Tatum, 6'10, bouncer to third. The new third baseman is Hal Anir, 2E15. And he makes the play. And with two outs, it's Jeff Torborg looking to go three for three. 1 8 pops to third base. Stretch time here in LA. We have been enjoying Steely Dan's wonderful uh, 74 LP, just slightly out of timeline. Pretzel Logic here. Uh, plenty of hits on this one, of course. Uh, Ricky, don't lose that number, and any major dude will tell you. Probably the top tracks on this cut. Wonderful stuff from Fagan and Becker and the rest of the studio orchestra. Bottom of the seventh. Four three Dodgers. Want, wanting some insurance. And it'll be Willie Davis leading off. Two, five, let's take a look at the card. Surprise, we haven't already. Willie freaking Davis. This card has been gold for three years in this league already. 309, 33 doubles, 10 triples, 10 homers, and 654 plate appearances. Has been to two or three All-Star games. I lose track. One in center field, minus one arm, A, B bunner, B hit and runner. Yeah, everything. Everything you want. Yeah, the power, you know, not a lot, but you get the idea. And when the Dodgers need it most, Willie seems to always deliver 2-5, triple one to 15 and you got a man at third base in a one-run game and that's what the dodgers need willie davis to constantly produce most guys when you move them all around the lineup they start to like slump or not willie doesn't matter where you put him he always comes up with big hits for this team now the other eight guys that's a different story here's bill russell the infield's going to come up for bill 38, let's take a look at the Russell card. You see, he is much better against lefties. But the bullpen of Las Vegas, their right relievers are not very good. And Ken Brett's probably the best remaining pitcher available to a to a Las Vegas team that just has, or playing this game with their hands tied, as you can gather. Um, 38 is single out dot, and now it is a 5-3 game. Russell is also a B-stealer, and when the Dodgers get a lead, they like to run, and Russell's going to attempt to steal, and this is going to be close. He's a 13 being held with a minus one arm. He's out. Two guys gunned down by Torborg. Well, one out. Now, 5-3 game, Billy Grabarkowitz. 46 is a base at the center field. He's going to try a stolen base, and he's in there. And we get another T, uh, we get another T rating, <laughs> and Torborg threw another ball into center field. Well, he's had mixed, mis, mis, mixed, yes, mixed results with that arm of his. He's gunned two guys down and thrown a couple balls into center field in four attempts. So there's that. So, Grabarkowicz is at third with one out and one in. Brett is not broken. 
as he's a starter eight, though he has put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, fourteen, fifteen men on base. Oh my goodness. And who's coming up here? We have Parker, Buckner, and then the other goons at the bottom. I don't know. I think you just have to love. I mean, it's Ken Brad. You're not. Yeah, just leave the guy in there. Take your medicine. Infield's going to come up with one out and a man at third and face Wes Parker. Here's the pitch to Wes. One, five. Let's take a look at Wes Parker's card. Went to the All Star game in two of the three uh, years as well. Parker and Davis have been the linchpins of this team. The other seven guys are very streaky. But Parker was hitting 400 at the All-Star break last year with this 1970 card. Uh, 693 plate appearances, a 319 average, 47 doubles, 4 triples, 10 home runs, and probably a gold glove. Maybe, I'm not sure about that, but he's a 187. And 1-5, automatically gone! And that's the sound of television sets in Las Vegas being switched off. So, it is now a, oh boy, on this track, it is now 7-3. Bill Buckner, 6'10", third X. This is A-Rod, a 2019 at third base. And with two outs, it's Steve Garvey, 5'11", bouncer to second. Tim Collins at 2'32", that's going to be a base hit. And Joe Ferguson, 55, is a double off the Brett card. We'll let Lanier be his final... Victim, if you want to call it that. Second and third for Hal Lanier. 37 grounds a third. Seven. Pretty forgettable innings for Ken Brett. The writing is on the wall. Tommy John is coming out of the game. When you're this close to winning a series and advancing to a divisional round to face either the Cincinnati Reds or the New York Mets and have two or three days off ahead of time, and you have a guy named Jim Brewer in your bullpen, <laughs> Yeah, you're not going to let this one slip away. I think they're going to go directly, or, or not here. Yeah, they're going to go directly to it. They're going straight, straight to Jim Brewer. No reason to uh, extend this or give Vegas any hope whatsoever. Jim Brewer, the other Dodger pitcher that was extended on opening day or improved, it was Don Sutton and Jim Brewer. They were already on the Dodger team last year with different cards. But during the draft, the Dodgers decided to improve the Sutton and Brewer cards instead of drafting players. That meant that after the draft was over, they only had 18-man roster. And their 19th and 20th players were a very bad Steve Garvey rookie card and a very bad Joe Ferguson rookie card. But obviously, Don Sutton and Jim Brewer have paid off much more than Steve Garvey and Joe Ferguson has hurt the Dodgers. As a matter of fact, Steve Garvey has six home runs with a really bad card, so he's clearly overachieved. So the Dodgers getting back on the high life. After getting the Houston Astros off their schedule, they got six outs to get, and here's Tommy Davis against Jim Brewer in the top of the eighth. 110 base hit. Ken Berry, 53, first C. Brewer goes to second for A-Rod. Two eight rounds a third, and with two outs, it's Ron Hansen. 47 off a of Brewer, there's nothing there, but outs. That one's a strikeout. Bottom of the eighth inning, who gets the joy of finishing? We're gonna let Tom Dukes pitch the eighth inning because his card is coming up in the offseason. It's a 1970 card, you can know that by the ink font is black for the 70 reissue set so this is the last we will see of this tom dukes card for vegas in the bottom of the eighth inning it'll be frank baker 68 is a base hit willie davis 410 center x ken barry 1e0 don't have to roll when you're 1e0 in center bill russell 27 up base hit two on for grabarkowitz Two fours hit by the pitch. Bases loaded. West Parker, 47 walk. And this is what the Dodgers do. You know, when they finally figure things out, they uh, roll up the score in a game they don't need to roll up the score in. So it's now 8-3. to three. Base is still loaded for Buckner. 34 lines a second. And with two outs, it's Steve Garvey. Rolls a second. Brewer will not get a save in this game. 
Does he go to the ninth inning? Well, actually, he had a, what, a four-run lead in two innings. Yeah, he will get one, believe it or not. Uh, it'll be Tim Cullen, 2-9 lines out. Bacabella, 2-9 rolls a short. And Jim Nettles, 66, is a strikeout. And that's the sound of Las Vegas' season coming to a crashing halt here. Not a lot of suspense. And, you know, again, you have eight expansion teams. One goes to the playoffs, so that's one-fourth of all teams is expansion and one of the division winners. But you just got to do better. You got to get lucky. You got to pull something out of your hat. And they had nothing. They just basically had nothing in this one. I hit in two Ks. Tommy John gets a the win. Seven hits and three runs. All were earned. Two walks and a strikeout. Tom Dukes. Two hits are running two walks. And Ken Brett with a forgettable start. He'll come back. He'll come back uh, with a different card next year. No, same card next year. 17 hits. My goodness. And the Dodgers. Oh, boy. We had throwing errors in this one. This was a mess. We have one, two, uh, five earned runs. And we have no walks and two strikeouts. 1019, 0108. 8-19-3-8, That is game number three. Your number five Dodgers are going to have to sit and wait and find out who they play. We don't know who they're going to play yet. They're going to have to wait and find out what happens when the Braves and Astros play. If the Braves beat the Astros, oh my goodness, the Braves will play the New York Mets. And the Dodgers will We'll play the Cincinnati Reds. But if Houston, as the home team, defeats the Braves, they go to Cincinnati, and the Dodgers go to the Mets. And that sounds like music to the Mets' ears. If I'm the Mets, I'd rather face the Dodgers than the Braves, just because of all that power the Braves have. Dodgers now 24 and 15, hitting 287 with a 302 ERA. Those numbers are good, but the numbers are very misleading because they. Get eight or nine runs in one game, and then they put 16 men on in another game, only score once. Uh, Don Sutton is eight and four, and the ERA goes down and down and down. Uh, Don Sutton's ERA is 135. Could he bring it down to 112? Probably not. I don't think so. But Andy Messersmith, seven and one. Those guys are 15 and five. Weirdly, Pete Mickelson's 0-4 in the bullpen. Interesting. And he has four of the 15 losses. For Vegas, they finished the year 20-21. and 21, Tied with Colorado. Hitting 268 with a 388 ERA. We'll give you a full uh, end of season accounting for them. We plug in results here. Uh, Dodgers. They, you, saw, you saw this is last year's results. They were in the three bracket last year. Now they're in the five four bracket. The Dodgers win three zero, and they are now nine over five hundred. And Vegas, check it out. Vegas got eliminated last year, but they got eliminated by the San Francisco Giants, and we're twenty one and twenty one. This year they're eliminated by the Dodgers and are twenty and twenty one. And there's that. That's it tonight, folks. Congratulations, Dodgers, for doing what you're supposed to do and not making it more mysterious or delaying it or making me do extra work. So I appreciate a quick night of baseball from the LA Dodgers. That's it. Thanks for checking it out. We'll see you next time.